Thank you very much. It, it, it is the custom in, in, in this uh, ceremony to, uh, to also hear from an outstanding graduate. Um, and in this case, we have someone who is about to be a graduate uh, whose uh, reputation uh, uh, speaks for itself, a uh, recent departmental award uh, winner and someone uh, of, of whom it seems like every uh, professor that she's uh, worked with has just extraordinarily positive things to, uh, to say. So we're going to be hearing from uh, a member of the class of 2022. Kinga, the floor is yours. Uh, that is really tough to follow. Um, <laughs> since they've said everything that I wanted to say, I can just leave. <laughs> yeah, um, I can't compete with that. But uh, thank you, Professor Johnson. Um, good evening, everyone. Uh, this is a small crowd, but this is kind of uh, right up my alley. And um, so I would love to extend um, a warm welcome to all our guests or no guests and uh, <laughs> family, friends and faculty present here today. And of course, a warm welcome to the graduating class of Historians 2022. Hi, Francisco. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Rachel. Um, it's an absolute honor and a privilege to be here and uh, speak uh, tonight. And I would love to start by acknowledging every single one of us graduates. Um, for making it to the finish line and completing our degrees during these truly unprecedented times. I would love to extend our deepest thanks to our family members and friends who supported, cheered and encouraged us through thick and thin and sacrificed so much so we can pursue our intellectual odyssey as Professor Wells always says. Uh, to our Brooklyn College community, staff, administration, and dearest faculty, thank you for your unwavering commitment to our success, for encouraging um, us to be better and to do better. Without all of you, this would not be possible. So we've all been told that time spent in college is transformative. Transformative in regards to personal growth, learning and self-discovery, as well as by connecting with like-minded people and forming lifelong relationships and community. And there is no question that our particular college experience was indeed transformative, though perhaps not in a way we've had initially imagined. Within the last few years, we've been dealing, in the past few years, we've been dealing with the fallout from the COVID-19 health crisis, economic recession, growing racial injustice, weakening of our democratic institutions, environmental crisis, and now also an assault on women's bodily autonomy. The long list ensures that the last couple of years have not been easy for most of us, and the lessons we had to learn and master extended way beyond our classrooms. In hindsight, figuring out how to work Zoom, though challenging for some of us, myself included, was the least of our concern. The last few years proved that the way our current system works, or rather doesn't work for most Americans, is not sustainable. As Julie Shea points out in her book on environmental justice, the three richest people in the United States, Jeff Bezos, Warren Buffett, and Bill Gates, own as much wealth as the bottom of the population, which is 160 million people. And that was before the pandemic. Forbes magazine reports that while the vast majority of us and our families struggled to make ends meet during the pandemic, struggled with physical and mental health challenges, with isolation and anxiety, while so many struggle with food and housing insecurity, the number of billionaires in America has actually increased from 615 in 2020 to 724 in 2021. And I think that none of us can uphold the status quo any longer. So 
even though our time in college might not have been the kind of transformative experience we have imagined or hoped for, while we embark on the journey, I believe that it made us uniquely aware of our society deeply ingrained problems and inequalities. And with this awareness comes the responsibility to bring change, to do better, and to be better individually and collectively. I wish I could say to all of us here tonight that everything will just work itself out. After all, doesn't the arc of the moral universe bend towards justice? Unfortunately, I do not think we can afford to sit back and wait to find that out. I think it is time to ensure that we bend the arc in the right direction. When I first came to Brooklyn College in the fall of 2017, I knew that I wanted to major in political science. I know, I'm a traitor. <laughs> I decided to go back to school after the 2016 election, which shook me to my core and convinced me that I cannot be sitting on the sidelines any longer. And I also need to take responsibility for the world around me. Before the first semester, the advisor helped me register for four classes. And because I was accepted over the summer, there were very few choices within my major or the pathways that fit in my schedule. So the advisor registered me for a computer science class. <laughs> Ooh, yes. So uh, one thing about me is that computer science and I uh, we don't get along. So before the semester started, I decided to go on a hunt to find a replacement class that would actually interest me and I would actually enjoy. And this is how I end up in my first history class at Brooklyn College with Professor Remy. And not long after, I took a class with Professor Wills. And before I knew it, I declared history my second major. In other words, I was hooked. And I was hooked for two reasons. And I believe that both are crucial to stress if you want to bend the arc of the moral universe towards justice. The first reason is rooted in indigenous wisdom. As Nick Estes, a citizen of the Lower Brule Sioux tribe and a professor of American studies writes, quote, Indigenous notion of time consider the present to be structured entirely by our past and by our ancestors. There is no separation between past and present, meaning that an alternative future is also determined by our understanding of our past. Our history is the future, end quote. I think all of us here intuitively know that history is not something in the past, but that we embody it and carry it with us into the present. And therefore, we cannot understand our current circumstances without understanding history. And more importantly, we cannot create a better future until we honestly and genuinely reconcile our past. The second reason I was hooked on history relates to people that make our department so special. And I am sure that all of us here will agree, as Micah said earlier, that the department attracts one, the best students, uh, Brooklyn College students, and that most of us actually are drawn to study here because we have the most incredible faculty from the entire school. But what we really have at the history department is not just collection of great people. We have a community, a community that is supportive, caring, while also holding each other accountable. And I am convinced that if we want to see a better days ahead, we need strong communities in all areas of our lives. So rather than chasing the elusive concept of the American dream that pins us against one another, that fosters unhealthy competition, a zero-sum game mentality, and glorifies socially harmful and toxic wealth accumulation, let's focus on the strength and the quality of our communities. A few weeks ago, I got a fortune cookie with a message that read, quote, 
a different world cannot be built by indifferent people, end quote. I think this simple message perfectly encapsulates why communities are so critical, because by definition, there is no room for indifference within one. Years ago, James Baldwin wrote, quote, the place in which I will fit will not exist until I make it, end quote. Together, let's create a place where everyone will fit and belong. Thank you. Thank you.